Today we're taking a first look at my newest piece of solar imaging gear. It's the Lunt Solar Wedge. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. I wanted to share an unboxing and first impressions video of this handy way addition to my solar imaging setup. For full disclosure, this is my own unit that I paid for myself and as always you'll get my honest opinion about it all. The Lunt Herschel Wedge is used to observe or image the sun in white light and can provide crisp and detailed views of specific parts of our star known as the photosphere. Here you can see sunspots and surrounding regions as well as granulations. Another popular method of imaging is through a hydrogen alpha filter which unlocks the sun's chromosphere. That sits above the photosphere and here you'll find huge amounts of details including solar prominences, filaments and flares and other active regions. You may have seen me use the Daystar Quark in a couple of my telescopes and other videos and I'll be doing an in-depth review of that excellent unit in an upcoming video. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification below so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Thanks very much for your support, it really helps my channel to grow. If you want to learn more about the many ways you can observe an image of the sun, I'll link to an excellent article on Lunt's website in the description below, so go check that out after you've watched this video. Let's fully unbox the Lunt Wedge now and I'll take you through some of its features. The Lunt Wedge comes in a sturdy metal case which is filled with soft and secure foam cut to the shape of the wedge. This is great if you'll be transporting the Lunt Wedge or if it's being stored away when not in use. There's also room for some optional accessories which I'll cover later in the video. There's really not much included in the case as the wedge is its own self-contained wee unit, so let's go over some of its features and specs. You'd be forgiven for assuming this was a standard diagonal, which many of you out there would be familiar with. It certainly looks like one, but this unit has some additional features which we'll look at now. The most obvious difference is the large red circle at the back with a hot surface warning. This is known as a heat trap and its job is to safely dissipate unwanted heat and light from the sun so you can safely image or observe. Inside the wedge itself there's a pre-installed ND3 filter which is essential for imaging and observing the sun. This filter blocks around 95% of the light and the remaining 5% is dimmed, preventing damage to your camera, eyepieces and most importantly your eyes. Before we continue, I just want to emphasize the fact that while imaging and observing the sun's great fun, you need to be very, very careful and make sure you're only using properly certified equipment. Don't ever look at the sun with your naked eye or with a telescope or any other optical equipment that isn't specifically designed to do it. If you're new to this aspect of astronomy and astrophotography, I'd also encourage you to carefully research the gear that you'll need and the theories and methods around solar imaging and observation. Make sure you know how to properly use your equipment and be especially careful if you're helping less experienced users or if there's kids about. Right, warning's over. Let's get the wedge attached to the scope and I'll show you how it all fits together. I'm using the one and a quarter inch version of the wedge here, but it also comes in a larger two inch version. According to Lunt, this smaller model is ideal for refractors up to around 100 millimeters in aperture, and the two inch is best suited with refractors of six inches or less of front aperture. I chose a smaller version because with the larger two inch model, it can be tricky to reach focus on some scopes as it requires additional in-focus travel to get a clear image. But if you can focus your scope with a standard diagonal, you should be just fine with this one and a quarter inch version. Today I'll be pairing my Lunt Solar Wedge with the Skywatcher 72 ED DS Pro, which is a wonderful apochromatic doublet refractor. I've had great fun with this scope for deep sky imaging over the years, but it's been recently transferred onto full-time solar imaging duties. It's going to be the main scope for a fully portable solar rig that I'm building out, but I'll feature that in a future video. Because the back end of the scope has a larger opening than I need, I'll have to use a couple of adapters to get the Lunt Wedge to fit properly. I'll pop in this handy 2-inch compression ring adapter, which screws directly onto the M54 thread of the scope. This allows me to then use a 2 inch to 1 and a quarter inch adapter to be securely fastened to my refractor. From here I'll slot the Lunt Solar Wedge into the adapter and fasten it down for imaging. Final piece of the puzzle is the most important for imaging and that's the camera. Today I'll be using my ZWO174MM with a 1 and a quarter inch nose piece to slide into the Lunt Solar Wedge. All of my gear will be sitting on a new specialized mount that I just picked up, the awesome Skywatcher Solar Quest. It's pretty much a one trick pony but it does its job very very well. It's going to be getting its own dedicated video soon, so I'm not going to go into too much details here. But essentially all you have to do is plonk it down and using a mixture of internal GPS and a cool wee photodiode sensor, the mount automatically finds the sun, locks onto it and tracks it continually with really high accuracy. For a small rig like this one, it's the perfect way to quickly and efficiently start a solar imaging or observing session. If you want to learn more about any of the gear that I'm featuring here, then I'll have links to everything I mentioned in the description below the video, so feel free to go and check that out. And that's it, we're all ready for imaging, so let's get the rig outside and get it centered on the sun. Okay, we're pretty much good to go now, so I'll get the Solar Quest centered on the sun and we'll dive into Sharp Cap here on the laptop to have a look at some of the initial results. Okay folks, so we are now centered on the sun, so the wee Solar Quest has done its job admirably. I'll zoom out here a little bit and you can get a, a better look at the, the full disc. Not bouncing around too much, so the scene's really good, so it's a good, good opportunity to do a first light test today. And already we've got two big sunspots here towards the lower center of the sun, as you can see on the screen capture some images here and we'll get these stacked up and I'll, I'll show you an end result at the end of the video so stay tuned for that but 
already I'm really, really happy with how clear this is coming out. Lunch Solar Wedge doing a good job here. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, this is looking really good. So good combo here with the Lunt Wedge, the 174mm camera and the Skywatcher 72ED. Really, really impressed with the first light test. Well, I'm back inside now and I've had a better look at the data that I captured during my first brief light test there. I'm super impressed with what I've seen so far and I'd highly recommend this gear combination or something similar if you want a light, compact, grab-and-go solar rig. I'll certainly be holding on to this wee lunch solar wedge and it was great fun to use. It's so cool to image and observe in white light and get a different perspective on the sun. It really highlights how complex our big old star is. There's certainly cheaper ways to image in white light, but having used front-mounted solar film on other scopes and cameras, I think this lunch solar wedge provides much sharper views and greater contrast, which leads to more pleasing images, in my opinion anyway. There's room for both though, so it's nice to have options. I'll share my stack subs at the end of the video, but before I go, I thought I'd mention some of the additional accessories that I'm considering to make this an even more efficient imaging platform. I'm planning to grab the Batter Solar Continuum filter, which I'll try and use to tease out more details and contrast in my images. I've seen some good results online, so looking forward to trying that out. The other addition is purely mechanical, but no less important, and that's the ADM Dual Dovetail Adapter made specifically for the Solar Quest. I'm hoping it'll give me a more secure fit for my dovetails. It means I can have the option of a beefier Lodge Mandy plate if I swap my gear out. The clamp in this will also prevent marring in my dovetails, which can be caused by the standard one fitted here. This is really a nice to have as opposed to necessity, and there's nothing wrong with the standard clamp, and it's given me no issue so far. So that's my first look at the Lunch Solar Wedge. This is an excellent choice and a great piece of gear if you're thinking of imaging or observing in white light. I'd highly recommend it. You'll certainly be seeing it more in some of my future uploads and published images. Do you do any solar imaging or observing yourself? Let me know what gear you use in the comments below. If you guys have any questions, just post them below and I'll do my best to help. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll leave you now with a stacked image for my first light test. Take care of yourselves, have a great day or night wherever you are in the world and clear skies to you all.